Hey guys, it's David with Cars and Code. In this video, I'm going to keep working on this chess AI and setting up the UI for it. Um, so specifically, we're gonna look at highlighting squares so a user can tap on a square, it'll highlight the piece or the square at that location, and then they can tap somewhere else to try and move the piece to that location. So we're gonna add a little bit of highlighting on the squares uh, so we can see where that's gonna, where they, where they tap. So that's what we're gonna start out with. So the first thing we're going to want to do is on our actual tile view model, uh, we're going to come over here. We're going to add a Boolean property on here called is highlighted. Now that we've got this is highlighted property, we can, we can actually bind to this is highlighted property on our XAML. So if we come over here uh, into our source, instead of the background color just being straight white or red, we're gonna actually bind uh, to that is, uh, is highlighted property here on tile. But instead of, uh, since it's a bool, we don't wanna be putting uh, actual view stuff like colors and whatnot in our view model. We're gonna create a converter that's gonna convert the is highlighted Boolean to uh, yellow if it's highlighted and if it's not highlighted, then we're gonna have the standard white or red. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna have a converter uh, with a converter parameter where we can pass in the uh, background color that it usually is. So if the square is usually white or red, we'll pass that through. And if it's not highlighted, then it's gonna use that color. But if it is highlighted, we're gonna use yellow. So let's go through and implement that right now. So first we're gonna grab this bool for the value. And then we're gonna check if it is highlighted. If it is, we're gonna return true. Otherwise, we're gonna take the parameter and use that. Okay, and then the last thing we have to do is we have to come over here to our actual XAML and use this converter. So the converter parameter for this one, since it was white, is gonna be uh, white and hex. So when that gets passed through as a converter parameter, as FF, 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 if we look at our actual converter, it's gonna take that, that parameter, which is a string of the white as hex, and it's gonna convert that into a color, which is white. So we're gonna do that same thing for these other three squares. Now these have to be red instead of white. Now when we actually draw our board, um, we're gonna assign piece, but now we're gonna actually assign all of the values of is highlighted to false. Um, these are all gonna start out not highlighted. And then we're gonna just assign one to true so we can see that it actually does turn yellow. So now we should be able to run this and we can see that the top left corner is going to be highlighted. Looks like I don't have my phone plugged in, so let me do that one sec. So here we can see the, the squares are like normal. We, the top left square uh, with the black pawn there is highlighted. So that's what our highlighted square is gonna look like. So when a user taps on the square, it's gonna turn yellow so they know that they have tapped that square. So the next thing we're gonna add is actually adding the click events where when a user taps the square, it will turn yellow. So we're gonna have to add a, a tap command to every one of these. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to, inside of our image, add a tap gesture recognizer. So we're gonna be binding to a tap gesture recognizer um, with a command of tile tapped. So tile tapped isn't actually on our tile object yet. So we're gonna have to go to our tile object and add that first. And once we have it added here, we're gonna have to um, get this uh, as an event to raise up to our main view model. So our main view model can actually do these correct changes for us. Now 
Now before you all go and yell at me for making these events and making them um, like this, because there's, there's obviously better ways to do this. Um, the best way, as I've said before, is instead of just having a bunch of these um, separate images to create a list of them and then you can just have an item selected on that list bound to the main view model, we're just going to skip over that kind of stuff and just do it the easiest way possible that makes it really straightforward. Because we're really not going to be caring about the UI too much in this. It's going to be more about the actual uh, logic in the um, the AI. So so we're just going to kind of gloss over that. We can maybe come back later and fix it later if, if we want to. So now we have our tile tapped command here along with a tile tapped event. So in our main view model, we're going to have to add that tile, tile tapped event um, for each one of these tiles. So in this tile tapped event, uh, should get called every time one of our tiles is actually tapped. Um, so and here is where we're going to want to set is highlighted on that tile. Um, we, we could do that in our actual tile set is highlighted to be here, but we're going to do a little bit more fancier logic and we're going to do it in here actually. Um, because first we're going to have to click somewhere to highlight that square, but then the next click is actually going to be moving pieces around. So that's why we're going to have to do it in here. So the way we're going to do this um, is we're going to have a selected tile object in our main view model. Now that selected tile is going to be the currently selected or highlighted tile that a player has because you only have one highlighted tile at a time. After you highlight a tile uh, that a piece is on, then the next tile you click is going to try and move that piece to, to that tile. So there's only going to be one highlighted tile at a time. So we're going to first check if they already have a selected tile. So if they don't have a selected tile, we're going to highlight it and set it as the selected tile. And this should actually work, so we can go ahead and run this. Let's first actually though get rid of our automatic highlighting here. And in our main page, we're going to copy this just recognizer and put it on all of the images. Okay, now we should be able to run this and the first tile we tap on should get highlighted and turn yellow. So we can go ahead and tap on the top right tile and it turns yellow exactly as we wanted. So now that we have to just handle if we already have a selected tile and we click somewhere else, we're going to want to try and move that piece to that tile. So. The first thing we're going to do when we want to move the piece is first let's unhighlight all the tiles. So let's take the selected tile and unhighlight it. The next thing we're going to do is move the piece. Now this is going to be a little bit more complicated and we're going to save this for the next video, but we'll just call a blank method for now called try move human piece. And once we've done that, we're going to set the selected tile back to null. So now we should be able to click on a piece, it'll highlight it. And when we click somewhere else, it's going to try to move the piece to that tile. It's not going to actually do anything, but we're just going to show that it works. So let's go ahead and tap on the top right tile again. It turns yellow and let's try and move it to the bottom left. It unhighlights um, exactly as we would expect. Note that no piece is actually moved, but we're gonna actually handle this try to move human piece a little bit later. So that's gonna be the end of this video. In the next video, we're gonna actually change our board to be an eight by eight board and move pieces around, um, as well as has all the, the entire chessboard with the kings and queens and everything set up. In the video after that is my hopefully, or hopefully we'll get into the actual AI. So thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.